This is number three. Beginner's English Concertina number three. If you've stumbled across this by mistake, then... Uh, no, 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 I don't mean by mistake. If you've stumbled across this while surfing and you're interested, click on the uh, More From This User button and you'll be able to find numbers one and two. Okay, but this is number three. I'd like to thank people for hitting hitting the site really or you know watching the videos I've been quite encouraged there's been quite a lot of uh, positive and, and very generous feedback so thank you for that still struggling with a bit of a ch uh, chesty infection so I'm sorry if I uh, cough a little <coughs> it's a dry dry tickly cough okay we finished last time looking at uh, the scale of C that's it there the scale of C we would had a, a quick look at how to hold it, which is uh, th thumb, first joint there, little finger down there, and then your fingers have got full use up and down the rows. And we were looking at the scale of C, which involved using those two fingers, your first two fingers, up and down the centre rows. And the scale alternates from one end of the instrument to the other. If your concertina is in modern pitch, then you should be able to play along with me, and you should be able to play that scale. I say modern pitch because in the early days, a lot of concertinas were made to suit brass band playing for the Salvation Army, and uh, they were pitched just a little differently. And if your sound's a little out of tune, it could be that it's still set up in old pitch, and uh, a a restorer, uh, a concertina engineer would be able to bring that up to up to modern pitch. Okay, but <coughs> excuse me. Let's have a go at playing that scale, C major scale. Here's the note you're looking for. It's on the left hand end. It's on one of the two centre rows. It's it's on the uppermost row. That's what you're looking for there. And on the other end. This end, you're looking for the next note up in the scale, which is the note D. So if you can find those two, with your first fingers, index fingers, if you can find those two, then we can play the scale. Okay. Now it helps if we, you know when I'm starting, and a conductor doesn't count in exactly, a conductor uses the baton and everybody watches him, but in lots of music, uh, popular music, particularly in folk music, you'll hear somebody count in. My way of counting, counting, or counting in, is normally to give two bars of counting. So what I would normally do is one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And the counting indicates to all the other players the pace, the speed, if you like, the tempo at which we're going to play. And it also indicates how many beats there are in a bar. So for playing the scale, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four is a suitable counting. If we were playing a waltz, then I would count one, two, three, two, two, three, because a waltz has three beats in the bar. And I make that point because lots of people I come across don't know how to count in, or they go, right, let's make a start, shall we? One, two, three, four and play at an entirely different tempo to the counting that they use. So let's try that again. So I'll go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So one octave scale, there's eight notes in the octave from the lower C up to the top C. And you can try some different exercises for yourself like this. Sorry, you can come
come down the scale. My hope is, is that you will use those first two fingers on each hand and just get familiar with that set of eight notes. Okay, and then we'll have a look at uh, putting a tune. Now, I'm not a musician. I'm an adult who's learn the hard way. I've not had any instrumental in, uh, tuition. I've done some evening classes in theory. So <coughs> I hope that I can pass on to you some little helpful tips and hints that I've found actually music teachers and, and musical friends have found it difficult to, to pass on to me. <coughs> now the first one is this. You need to get an idea of that scale in your head my, for me it goes vertically, mainly because my fingers go vertically up the f keyboard. So I go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So I can't sing. But I have that eight note scale in my head. And then when I hear a tune, I try and figure out the first note of the tune against that scale. And there are some helpful things. For example, well, <coughs> there we go. three blind mice. Please learn and remember that the first three notes of three blind mice are the last three notes of the scale coming down like this. If you remember that, you'll always be able to find that little phrase, la da da. You'll always be able to find that on your instrument because you know where it comes from. The starting note for three blind mice is also the starting note for in the bleak midwinter for example here we go just five notes being used there starting on that third note of the scale where three blind mice started go and tell aunt nancy starts on the same note just five notes again. So you can get the beginning of th three blind mice. Just using five notes you can get in the bleak midwinter. And finally you can get a bit of Beethoven, starting on that third note in the scale, the E note. Three tunes there, a bit of Beethoven, in the bleak midwinter, go and tell Aunt Nancy, and the beginning of Three Blind Mice, all working on just five notes from the beginning of that scale. Okay. Ten minutes is almost up. I've got a little digital clock running on the machine now. So that's it for this session. Okay. Have a play around with that scale. Get those two fingers moving up and down that scale. And learn to find the beginnings of some tunes on that scale. Okay. Catch you next time. Bye.